I am on a quest. A quest to make everything... Okay, not everything, just... As many things as I possibly can that I have always wanted to make, but never did because I didn't have enough time, or it wasn't practical, I felt guilty because it was self-indulgent, me, 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 me. I'm doing it. And what I'm going to start with is something that I've wanted to make for a very, very, very long time, and that is a Chimmy Saint Laurent. While I would like to make the historically accurate version of the dress, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to make a modernized version of the dress. I really wanted an outfit that just screamed main character energy. Not just main character energy, but main character energy. Just, 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 just. And so I'm going to make a modernized version of the Chemise à la Reine in black. I'm going to use this fabric. It is 100% cotton fabric and I found it at the thrift store. There are roughly five yards here. I know I've complained before about how difficult it is to find black fabric at my local thrift store, which is where I get most of my fabric. And when I saw this, I didn't say it out loud, but you know, in my mind, I said, Hurry! so, um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to find black fabric, but to find hundred percent cotton fabric, five yards of it, this is incredible and must not be wasted. So I better not mess this up. No pressure or anything. I began by cutting out a basic shape from the infamous bedsheet, which is on its fifth and final project. It has served me well. I gathered the neckline just above the waist and at the waist. I placed it on the dress form and pulled those gathers up to fit. It's a very tedious business pulling on threads. I also placed this half muslin on the back of the dress form to determine what the difference would be. I was planning on cutting out basically the same shape, but with less fabric. I then painstakingly pulled all the threads out. Then I laid that piece out onto my new pattern paper and traced the shape, making it longer and flaring it out just a little bit. I used the same pattern for the back, making a small adjustment where the fold would be so that there would be less gather than on the front. I marked where I would place the fold for the front and then where I would place the fold for the back. Though as an incredibly indecisive individual, I changed my mind to actually make the back a little bit more gathered than that. So I adjusted where the fold would end up. I did mention the incredible indecision, yes. I changed my mind yet again and decided to give it a little less gather, and I finally went with that. I put the half muslin back up on the dress form to get an idea of how long and how wide the shoulder piece should be. Then I sketched out the basic shape, cut it out, and it ended up looking kind of like this. I pinned it to the muslin, trimmed here and there to get it just right, and then I made another muslin. Please welcome the thrifted blue sheet. Making yet another muslin may seem like a waste of time, but it definitely wasn't. And it definitely wasn't a waste of the sheet fabric either. The dress is so voluminous that I saved the pieces to make muslins for future projects. So I think this needs to come up. This might need to come up as well. I won't know until I try it on. Also, these lines kind of went a little wonky, so I just have to straighten them out. So I think I need to raise the shoulder line. It just It's just a little bit long. To straighten the wonkiness, I used my measuring tape, but you can also use a ribbon if you find yourself in a similar predicament. If you have never seen this motion in the wild before, allow me to inform you. This is quite common in the Soas realm. It is what is known as fear of cutting into fabric. Not a good name but a serious issue amongst many sewists. Is she gonna do it? She did it. A bias tape shortage and because I was nervous about things being too bulky I went ahead and split most of the bias tape down the center and pressed it open flat before stitching it to the fabric. I do not recommend this for any item that is going to experience a lot of friction because it will not hold up for very long.
Now it's time to lace the elastic through each channel. Attach a device to one end and slide it through like a little train going through a tunnel. I used to use the safety pin trick where you attach a safety pin to the elastic and then guide it through. I've also heard you can use a bobby pin, but I've never tried it. My mom gave me this vintage bodkin recently and I don't think I can ever go back to the safety pin trick because this is so much easier. So if you plan on doing a lot of sewing, a lot of lacing, elastic, or ribbon through channels, do invest in a metal bodkin. It is rather fantastic. But before you get very far, make sure that you grab the tail of the elastic and safety pin it to the actual fabric so that you don't lose it because there aren't many things in sewing that are more discouraging than losing the end of your elastic. Although hemming an entire skirt only discovered that you ran out of bobbin thread at the first two inches, that's much sadder. But you know, losing your elastic is pretty high up there in the sewing sadness charts too. I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. Not perfect, of course, but if you were looking for perfection, you were on the wrong channel. Perfection is so last season. This is the season of doing things imperfectly, of doing things scared, of doing things simply to inspire joy. <laughs> 